Hello and welcome to 135 Interview Answers. My name is Stephen Conway. My background is, is that I have recruited for some of the largest companies over the last 20 years. What we've done is we've split this into seven sections, which are the key areas that any company wants to know about you and whether you're going to fit in. I need to just let you know, it's impossible to be able to give you the exact answers for every single question. And I would strongly emphasize that you don't just copy these answers verbatim. The whole idea behind it is that you have one or two ideas from each answer to formulate your own answer. Best of luck. Let's go straight to section one. What do you want to get out of today's meeting? And the key to this is being very clear that by the end of the interview, you know whether the job is right for you and they know whether you're right for them. Um, I'd like to know more about the firm and the position offered. I'd like you to know more about uh, me and my skills. So by the end of the interview, I know exactly whether it's the right position for me and indeed whether I'm right for you. What would you like to be called? The key here is to use your full name or a shortened name. Don't use a nickname. Well, my name's Catherine, but my friends call me Kate, so you can call me Kate if you'd like. What hobbies do you have? This is a great opportunity for you to talk about any involvements with any team or any community organisations. I love dancing. Um, I'm a member of a fitness club that incorporates dance with aerobics, and I go three, four times a week. I see you like skiing. Here they picked up on one of your hobbies and this is a great opportunity to talk about one of your passions but at the same time show that you have a life outside of work. Yeah, I do. I usually organise the holidays um, for, my, for my friends um, and, but mainly I just get to keep fit which I find really important. Tell me about yourself. This is probably one of the most difficult questions in the whole interview and it's very easy to waffle. So the best thing that you can do is, number one, is keep it to sort of two or three things in your life that are very relevant to this role, number one. And number two, if you're not sure or feel uncomfortable, then seek clarification. Well, there's so much I could tell you about myself. Um, what specifically would you like to know? Tell me about your last employer. The best thing you can do here is to talk positively about all aspects of your work in your last company and be very careful to avoid any negatives. We worked well together, achieved a lot of good things. They're lovely people and uh, the only reason I'm here today is because I don't have an opportunity to progress within that company, but I really enjoyed working with them. What type of team do you enjoy working in? If the interviewer has given you any, any indication as to what the team is like, try and match up your skills and your experience accordingly. If they haven't given you any information, then just talk about positively about the things that you've enjoyed in previous teams. I work very well with other people and find myself most comfortable with a supporting role within the team. I like meeting goals and achieving objectives, so I, would, I think I would be very useful in that capacity within a team. What would your boss say about you? If you've had an appraisal with one of your previous bosses, then pick out the most positive comments from that and use that as your answer, but keep it succinct. My current boss would say I'm very hardworking, I'm a good team player, I'm a good communicator and um, I'm an important part of the team. What was your favourite subject at school? Here's a great opportunity to talk about what you did at school, but also how it's influenced you moving forward. Literature was a, a favourite subject of mine in school. Um, I enjoy reading. It's a really big passion of mine. I like learning new things and broadening my, my mind and, and my horizons. Tell me about a responsibility that you really enjoyed. Here's one of those questions you want to make sure that you've prepared one or two examples that you can answer and expand on with ease. The company hired a, a new recruit and I was in charge of developing him um, on two different projects and uh, he, he went from strength to strength and that, that gave me such a lot of satisfaction. I really enjoyed that. Do you prefer to work on your own? Here they're trying to establish that A you can work on your own but B that you can work in a team as well and you're happy to do both. 
Yeah, it was a mix really, a bit of both. Um, there were times when I had to work on my own uh, on particular projects. That is not a problem to me. I'm incredibly self-motivated and I'm very, very disciplined when it comes to that. So, and there were times, when, of course, when I worked in the office with the rest of the guys, with the team, which was a lot of fun, you know. Um, so uh, I would say overall it was a balance. What were the results of your last appraisal? Here's a great opportunity to talk about the positives of a previous appraisal, but more importantly, to talk about how you've improved as a result of any criticism. Uh, generally, very good. There were, there were a few things actually that they pulled up, but I, I found those really useful. Um, there were a few comments about certain things that I did, and, I, I, and on using those comments, I, I then improved and got better results. So, yeah, all good. What skills should your boss have? Here you want to draw upon experiences from your previous bosses, but also it's an opportunity to talk about where you can complement those kind of skills. Tenacity, focus, ability to make tough decisions, but if I was to join this firm as his employee, I'd like to think I could help him with all those things. Are you a team player? Here you can show how you're dedicated to moving forward with the team. Teamwork, uh, I very much enjoy. Um, it's a very important thing to me, being part of a team. Um, I work extremely hard when I'm part of a team because I'm aware that everybody is relying on each other and everybody's helping each other to come through. I'm very committed to winning. I'm very competitive in that way. But I'm also uh, very compassionate in, other, in another way. If, if I see a team member struggling, um, then I'll be the first to help them through. Because as I said, it's all about winning together. Why did you move to the city? So with this question, what you want to do is focus on the positives of the location with regards to your career and your family. Well, I wanted to move to London because there's a lot of opportunities here for my career. How would you describe your personality? Here you want to talk about how serious you are in regards to work, but at the same time, how committed you are to making it an enjoyable working environment. I'm enthusiastic about things. Uh, I work hard. But I, I also, I, I'm not too serious, I, I, I like to have good fun, um, but I'm very, very keen to get, get the job done. What is your ideal team? Here is a great opportunity to show what you respect about your team members. My ideal team um, would have a strong work ethic, but at the same time have a sense of fun. We'd work well together as a team and respect each other's ideas, and we'd all be working towards the same goal. What kind of person are you? The two elements here are, number one, that you're committed to achieving results, but number two, that you care about the people you work with. Well, in the past, people have described me as um, considerate, thoughtful, a high achiever, um, someone who's target driven, someone who's very loyal and a uh, hard worker. What's your relationship like with your last employer? The three elements here are be loyal, be positive and show where you had a great relationship with them. Uh, very good actually. Um, I wanted to progress, they understand that. They've actually given me a glowing reference uh, which I've, I've got with me. Um, yeah, so I, I can't speak highly enough of them and hopefully them of me. Are you comfortable dealing with upper management? The best thing to show here is that you're comfortable dealing with all members of staff, not just management. I'm very comfortable dealing with all levels of management. In my current position, I have to deal with three different managers at varying levels, and we get on fine. How do you rate against your peers? Here's a great opportunity to blow your own trumpet, but also to show that you really respected your other team members. Well, I think I've got good reason to be very proud of my standing in the team. Um, I've achieved a lot, as we talked about before, which is something that I'm, I'm really chuffed about. But there's a lot of good guys in there, and it's competitive, and I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm near the top. Who would be your ideal manager? The best thing to do here is to highlight how you would manage other people. My ideal manager or boss would be someone who communicates well with the team, um, a good role model and someone who inspires the team to work together and, uh, and produce the goods. Do you prefer a male or female boss? The most important thing here is that you have somebody who inspires you regardless of gender. It makes no difference. I've worked for both men and, and women and 
it's more about how inspirational your boss is and how much trust there is in the relationship. Do you have difficulties getting on with people? It's quite easy to say that you get on with everybody, but the truth is, is that will never be the case. So focus on how you go about resolving issues with difficult people. Yeah, I guess um, you can't always get along initially with everybody um, and in a work environment I guess I try and find a, a common ground for, for commonality and, and usually that brings them around and we can, we can start building a relationship. How often did you meet with your last boss? The best thing you can do here is strike a balance between showing that you're self-motivated but that you also like to communicate with your boss. I would try and meet up with my boss uh, first thing in the morning just to assess what matters needed to be dealt with and if there was anything urgent um, and then get on with my tasks. Should anything urgent arise, I would try to deal with it myself first. Um, otherwise, I would explore relevant channels to see if I can get it done without bothering my boss and, um, and then take that up with him if need be. What makes you different from the other applicants? Two things here. Big up your skills, but also big up why you're enthusiastic and passionate about this role. Although you might be able to find someone to match my technical skills, you'd be hard pressed to find someone with more passion or more drive than I have. And I also feel that I'm probably the best person to fit in with your team. How do you like to be managed? The key here is keep it brief and keep it positive. Well, as long as I'm given clear direction and the team knows where they're going, I'm happy. Tell me about your last job. What you need here is two or three experiences from your past that are relevant to this role. My last job in the editorial department uh, was really exciting and challenging. I started off um, helping them archive some files because they're moving office and, and then I got promoted to uh, being the PA's assistant and I learned a lot of new skills. How do you feel about your career progress? What you want to express here is that you've actually had a career plan and that it's not just been something that's happened by accident. But more importantly, that this next role is part of that plan. Uh, yes, it's, it's been going really well actually. Um, I've worked very hard at getting the right companies and the right roles all the way along and uh, now I, I think this would be a, a very good and, and very logical step for me. Have you ever been asked to resign? If you have been asked to resign, then talk about how you've learnt from the experience. But if you haven't, talk about the positive experiences that you've had with your previous bosses. I'd never allow myself to be put into that position, uh, but I've always had uh, very uh, positive um, relationships with, with my places of employment, and, and it's always been very hard to leave. What did you dislike about your previous job? The key here is to avoid being dragged into uh, opening a can of worms. I wouldn't say there was anything that I disliked. Uh, they're a fantastic organisation, they're lovely people to work for. I just felt that um, I needed more, I was demanding more from a company and it wasn't able to offer me that. What problems did you identify in your previous company? If you did identify problems in your last company, talk about what you did to help put it right. I identified a problem with the way we were managing our sales. Um, we were missing out on a lot of sales, so I brought this to the attention of my manager. The problem was rectified and now the sales figures have gone right up. Do you feel you have the ability to do the role? If you feel that you have any shortcomings, or if you are not entirely sure what they're looking for, then just make sure that you're clear that you learn quickly. Um, I have a huge amount of skills and experience that I can bring to your organisation. Um, I wouldn't say that I have all the skills, because at this stage I, would, I don't know quite what you're going to throw at me, but I have enough confidence to know that I can deal with the majority of the tasks that you're prepared to set me and produce the results that your organisation is looking for. Is there any unfinished business in your last role? What the interviewer wants to hear is that any handover of any unfinished work is going to go smoothly. It's very important uh, for me to move on from this company, leaving absolutely no mess behind. Um, 
the colleagues I'm working with were working towards certain projects, we're closing them up. Can you give an example of planning a project? Okay, what you want to do here is express that you are very clear about the process of the project, but also that you have a very clear outcome. The most recent project I organized was raising funds for a charity event with my company. And what I did was took the deadline and worked backward in stages from that, trying to figure out the best means of delegating responsibility to different members of the team so that we could raise the most funds possible. What characteristics do you think are important for the role? Here's a great opportunity to use the kind of terminology that they've got in either the job description or on their website. I think being able to work in a team, being enthusiastic and keen, um, and I think my previous boss will vouch for me being, being someone who has those skills. How were your university days useful for business? Here you want to have an example ready that is relevant to the role. During my course I organised um, a project over in India and um, I learned a lot about organising, planning, I had to use all my communication skills obviously because it was um, involving a different language and I think these are all skills that I can bring to this role. What are the important trends in this sector? The vital thing here is to show that you've done your research and also to ask an informed question. From the research that I've been doing, I can see that the trend in our industry at the moment is a growth market in the Far East. And I was wondering what your company is doing in that area at the moment. How did you get your last job? The best thing to do here is to talk positively about why they wanted you. Well, I was recommended by a client, actually, and they approached me, so I was really lucky. What are your strengths? Give a number of examples that you feel are relevant to the role? I have a very positive at attitude um, and a very good work ethic. I work well within a team or on my own and I have very good communication skills, I think. Do you have a weakness? You have two options in the way that you handle this. Number one is to talk about how you've improved upon an area that has been a particular weakness. Or the second option is to talk about a strength as if it is a weakness. I've been described as being a bit of a perfectionist, but um, it is something that I'm working on. I think it's beneficial to your company because it means that whatever task is given to me will get done to a very high standard. I used to find spreadsheets a bit of a challenge, but I paid to take up a one-day training course. And now, I'm a spreadsheets whiz. Do you think you have enough experience for the role? Now, if you feel that you don't have enough experience for the role, just make sure that you demonstrate how quickly you'll do something about it. Well, I agree that I've not got as much experience as some other candidates. Uh, but I think what I lack in experience, I make up for in enthusiasm. I'm really passionate about this kind of work. It's something I want to do. And any gaps in my experience, I think I'll make up in record time. Aren't you overqualified? Now the key here is that if you feel that you are overqualified in any way, shape or form, is to make sure that you focus on the areas that are still going to challenge you within that role. It, it may seem that I'm overqualified in, in some areas, but actually there's plenty about this role that um, I don't think I am, and I think I'll really be challenged uh, with, those, with those parts. And I'm really interested in this firm, and so, no, I don't think I am. Are you creative? The key here is to show that you're a free thinker and that you can come up with alternative solutions. And if you can, try and come up with a specific example. Well, I like to think outside of the box and find new ways of going about things. I recently put on an event that my company didn't even think about and turned out to be a great success that we're going to do annually now. How did your last job prepare you for responsibility? The key here is to demonstrate that you're very happy to take on extra responsibility. My last job prepared me for taking on greater responsibility because I took on quite a few extra tasks that were not in my immediate job domain and was still able to effectively execute my tasks as well as those. Can we contact your references? Here's another opportunity to show that you're well prepared and organised. If you can get references in advance, take them along with you.
Well, I've actually brought some with me, but if you want to speak to them yourselves, it's not a problem. Why are you not earning more at your age? The best thing to do here is to focus on the fact that money is not your sole motivation and that there are key elements of previous roles that you've chosen above money. Well, the company that I've been working for, the job they offered me was just such a fantastic opportunity. Um, exposed me to so many different ways of working, improved my skills. It was a chance I wouldn't have got elsewhere. So it wasn't just about the money. Um, it was about what I could learn, what experience I could get, and those things were more important. Would you ever break a rule? The best thing that you want to be doing here is expressing, number one, that you are creative and that you do think outside of the box, but that you do respect the rules, and that you, the most important thing is, is that you care about others. If ever I had to make a decision um, outside of the rule book, uh, I'd probably it's likely that I would implement a utilitarian approach. So think of the response in terms of the greatest good for the greatest number. But I'm also happy to think outside the box. In terms of rules, I don't really break them so much as bend them. Are long hours a problem? What you want to be focusing on is that you will do whatever it takes to make sure you get the job done. If you're asking whether I'd put in those extra hours to, to achieve goals, then absolutely, 100%. What would you take with you on a trip to Mars? The three elements here are keep it simple, keep it short, and keep it practical. Oh, tough question. Um, well, my partner, my daughter, and probably return to get home. Is your company launching any new products? The key here is to be A, discreet, B, loyal, but at the same time show that you can give a pleasant answer. Well, it's not very professional of me to disclose confidential information, but um, I could tell you about a product which I helped launch a couple of months ago. Uh, it's doing really well, and you've probably heard of it, actually. What question could I ask that could intimidate you? And the best thing to do here is to show that pretty much, on the whole, you can remain unfazed by any question. Well, to be honest, I think you've asked me all of the intimidating questions already. Describe one of your failures. Three things to focus on here. Number one, what you did to turn the situation around. Number two, what you learned from the situation. And number three, any other positives that were drawn from it. Well, uh, last year we had a target of 100 new clients. We only actually made 90 new clients. Uh, but to troubleshoot that this year, we, we upped it by an extra 10. So we had 110 clients this year. Um, but having said that, last year we made our financial target. So win-win. Can you make ruthless decisions? The key here is to show that you are committed to getting results, but at the same time that you're not harsh about it. I think ruthless is probably the wrong term, but if you're asking if, if I can be assertive or take on a very difficult decision, then the answer is yes. Describe a complex project. Two things you want to demonstrate here. A, that you can grasp difficult situations, and B, that you can come up with solutions to make them run more smoothly. In the last couple of months, I was put in charge of putting in a new system uh, for the HR department. It was a very complicated affair. There was lots of people involved. The whole process took about three weeks, um, but now the system runs very smoothly. Describe how you work under pressure. The best thing that you can do in this situation is to draw on a specific example where you've demonstrated your uh, ability to work under pressure, but at the same time where you've called upon other people to help get the situation resolved as quickly as possible. Uh, under pressure, there was an occasion last year when my boss went sick um, and um, he had a project which he was working on, had uh, another two weeks theoretically to go. Uh, but it had to be done and brought forward for 48 hours. Uh, a big project, we pulled together, all of myself and all the other staff, pulled together and we got it done. It wasn't a problem. Have you ever been asked to take a pay cut? If you have taken a pay cut, the key is to demonstrate that you've done it for the benefit of the company and not because you undervalue your own work. Uh, I have done in the past, many years ago. I took a pay cut for about three months. The company I was working for was going through tough times and I did it to help the company. 
Um, but to be honest, the circumstances would have to be pretty extreme for me to repeat that. How do you handle difficult decisions? The best thing to do here is be mindful of the impact that any decision may have on your colleagues, but at the same time be happy to take advice from your superiors. I like to take special care when dealing with relations that might have a negative impact on my colleagues. So I would think long and hard about it and if it's a particularly difficult decision then I might take it up with one of my superiors. What would you say is our biggest weakness? This is quite a tricky question, but the most important thing is, is that when you do highlight a weakness that they may have, is that you've formulated some kind of solution for it. Well, I think this is a great company, which is why I'm here. But from the research I've done, I think uh, a minor problem is possibly communication of your message to your clients. And I have one or two ideas that I'd love to raise with you that I think could really improve that situation. What makes you crack? And the answer here is that not only can you cope with pressure, but also that you help others to cope with pressure. I have to be honest, I, I don't think I've ever been under, I've been very fortunate, I've never really been under that much pressure before. Um, whenever we have, we've worked very hard to, to get through stuff, so I've, I've never actually cracked. One of the things though I think is a real strength that I have is um, taking the, the steam out of a very pressurised situation. Um, that's something I believe is a, a great strength of mine, so maybe that's why I've been lucky and I've, I've never actually gone that far before. Have you ever been fired? If you have been fired, be honest, show that you've learned from the situation and also show that it's been a really positive experience moving forward. Yeah, I was fired once when I was 18. Um, in fairness, I think I deserved it. I had a lot to learn about being an employee. Uh, I needed to learn all about things like timekeeping and respect for an employer, respect for a business. Um, and I'm pleased to say that I turned it into a positive thing. And uh, I've never, fortunately, been in that situation again since. Tell me about your worst boss. The key to this is loyalty to your previous bosses. So if there was an area of concern, just explain how you went about resolving that situation. I didn't really have any, any bad bosses. Um, I once had a manager who struggled to delegate with responsibilities, but I was able to win her over. And um, once I got her to trust me with certain tasks, uh, things were much better and ran a lot smoother. Your degree has no relevance to this role. This is a great opportunity to overcome an objection. And even if the title of your degree is not exactly relevant for this particular role, focus on what you did learn in your education that has helped you to get you where you are today. I, I had to work very hard and um, it taught me a lot about looking in different places, um, reaching different targets, uh, finding out about myself the whole way, finding out about the topics, finding about research, about applying myself, about stretching those boundaries and, and although it, it, it doesn't seem to be necessarily relevant, it's what I learned a lot about myself. I hope now I bring into, into the workplace and, and into the companies I work for. How many projects can you cope with at one time? Well, there's two parts to the answer here. Number one is, can you deal with multiple projects? But number two is the project that is the most important. How focused are you on making sure that gets done to the best of your ability? I am happy to take on more than one project at a time, uh, but my key skill is making sure that the project I am working on is completed effectively and within the schedule. What would you ask me if our roles were reversed? Now this is a great opportunity to compliment the interviewer on asking some great questions, but also secondly, for you to highlight any area of skills that you've not discussed already that you'd like to talk about. You've asked some really good questions so far, so it's quite difficult for me to think of another one, but there is one question I think I would like to ask, and that would be, what skills can you bring to this organisation that we don't already have? Describe a time when your work was criticised. Again, this is another opportunity for you to say where you've turned around a problem and made it into a positive. So focus on what you've done about it, whether you've actually spoken to anybody in the company about it, and how you engaged other people to resolve your issue. I was open to quite a lot of criticism for my paperwork. This is a few years ago. And I was noticing, actually, that they were probably quite right, but 
Anyway, eventually I got it into my head and I went and went to one of the fellow team members whose paperwork was just absolutely spot on and I just modelled myself on him for a couple of weeks thinking at first it was whatever. And actually it really worked. Have you ever been denied a salary increase? So this requires a similar answer to the pay cut. No, I haven't, but I did forego a pay increase that was offered to me once because the company was struggling. Um, it's not something I'd like to repeat again, but um, I did it out of loyalty because they'd been so good to me. What will you say in your resignation letter? Here, you want to demonstrate your gratitude and loyalty to your previous employer. So focus on where they've been great and how you'd like to thank them for it. Um, well, I would like to take the opportunity really to, to thank them for the experience uh, that they've given me and the time that they employed me for. Um, and you make it known that I'm, you know, it was with regret that I'm leaving the company and, and clearly the reasons I'm, why I'm moving on. Uh, but I have a really good relationship with my employer, so I'll probably just sit down and have a chat rather than write a resignation letter as such. Would you consider unpaid work? The best thing to do is to imply that you are happy to work unpaid for a very brief amount of time, but longer term, that would be unacceptable. Well, I love your company, so I would be willing to come in for a day or two to spend time with you and learn the ropes and get to know your colleagues and for, to have your colleagues get to know me. And um, I would be willing to do that unpaid. However, on a long-term basis, I would probably be distracted by any paid job offer simply because of my financial situation. Have you been on any courses recently? This question is aimed at finding out what level of importance you place on personal growth. So anything that you can add to show that you keep investing in yourself is fantastic. Well, I've gone on a series of different courses with my company, but I recently paid to go on a communications course, which I feel would come in very handy with this particular role. Why were you made redundant? Many people have been made redundant in their life. It's not unusual. So the best thing to do is focus on the positives that have come out as a result of the redundancy. Well, there was a bit of a downturn in the market, and myself and some other people were made redundant. But it actually worked out really well. I think I'd done all I could there, and I'm looking forward to moving on. Why is there a gap in your CV? The key here is to be honest, if you have been out of work, explain why that situation has arisen. But it still is a great opportunity for you to explain any personal achievements you've had during that time. Well, I went straight from uni into my first job, so I really wanted to do a little bit of travelling. I also wanted to do a marketing course, so I've done both and now I'm refreshed and ready to go. What's been the high point of your career? Here's a great opportunity to set yourself apart from the competition. So make sure you blow your own trumpet. But at the same time, highlight as well that high points of the career in the past don't mean that there are not going to be any more high points in the future. So demonstrate that there's more to come. <laughs> I'm hoping that there are lots more high points to come. Um, but the one that I can most recently recall was having been voted Employee of the Year by my peers in my last company. What kind of tasks get you energised? This is a great opportunity to show the interviewer that you do enjoy work, that you are an energetic person and that you like to rise to the challenge. I'm the sort of person that knows you don't learn something unless you really start to stretch boundaries and push comfort zones. Um, I'm not the sort of person that gives up easily. So a really difficult task really gets my juices going. What have been your biggest achievements? Um, what I would say is make sure that you prepare this in advance and have at least three examples of achievements that you can give to them. I was Employee of the Year last year. Uh, I've been promoted more times than anyone else in our company and I exceeded all my targets last year. How do you measure success? Well, there are many elements to success, so here's a great opportunity for you to talk about it from not only your perspective but also the company's perspective. I would measure success um, in a four-part scheme. Uh, the first is being remunerated for my efforts. The second would be being recognized for my hard work by my, my boss. The third being recognized by my peers and also achieving the client's objective.
so making the client happy as well. Why have you not worked in the last 12 months? Here's another opportunity to demonstrate how time off has re-energised you and refocused you. Yes, I did take um, 12 months off to raise my child, but during that time I took a refresher course to update my skills and I'm feeling really energised and I'm ready to go and I can't wait to get back into the workforce. Where do you want to be in five years' time? The key with this question is to demonstrate that your ambition is to be with this company for the long run. I hope I'm here um, looking back and thinking I've had a, a really good five years of um, working through the ranks, progressing well, now in a position of responsibility and really looking forward to the next chapter. How persistent are you? Here you need to be expressing that perseverance is one of the key elements to success. My mother once told me that success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So in essence I think that a certain degree of persistence is required in order to get the job done. How do you see yourself in the next two years? There's two parts to the answer of this. Number one, that you are ambitious and want to progress. But number two, that you're focused on the job in hand. And it's most important that you get that done first before you move on. Well, I would like to see myself in a managerial role within you know, a few years' time. But right now, I want to focus specifically on this job and complete it to the best of my abilities. Are you happy to do overtime? Now, there's two sides to this question. Number one, are you the sort of person that doesn't complete their tasks in the time allotted? And number two, if that is the case, are you somebody that doesn't have a life outside of work? So the key here is to make sure that you counter both of those. If working overtime weekends, etc., is a specific requirement of the job on a regular basis, I wouldn't want to mislead you in any way, and I may not be the right man for that, because I do have a life outside of work. However, I'm a great believer in getting a job done, and if on the odd occasion there is a situation where we need to work a weekend or overtime to get a job finished, I would have no problems doing that. Are you happy to do mundane tasks? Mundane tasks are part and parcel of everyday life. So the key here is to make sure that you demonstrate that that's not a problem. I have no problem at all with mundane tasks. I know we all have to muck in to get things done. Would you like my job? This is a great question to put you under pressure. But it's also a great opportunity for you to show A, that you're ambitious, but B, in being ambitious, you want to support that person move to the next level. I just quite like this job for now, but yeah, eventually, you know, once I've helped you move on, I, of course I'd like your job. What is your greatest accomplishment? This is a good time to show a detailed example of what you're most proud of. The thing I'm most proud of is um, when I was put in charge of a team um, when we were pitching for a very big client's business. Um, the team was great and we all worked together, we worked very hard, we did win the client's business and it was the biggest um, deal that we've done so far. I'm very proud of that. How quickly will you make a meaningful contribution? It's unrealistic for anybody to expect for you to come in and make a contribution from day one. It's much more realistic to say that from month two and month three, that's when you'll start to make a contribution and that you don't want to go in there upsetting the apple cart straight away. I think realistically I'll spend the first month coming into the organisation, finding out more about you, how your teams work, really settle in, make sure you know, I don't want to come in like a rocket and knock all the, like a bull in a china shop or anything like that. I want to come in, find out how you work, how I can best fit into your group. But by, by the second or third month certainly I'll be looking to, to make a real contribution and to be very much part of the team. What do we need to do to keep you challenged? In this question, they're testing whether you're self-motivated or whether you need micromanagement. So this is the time to show that you don't need them to make sure you do the job. You shouldn't really need to keep me challenged. I mean, I'm very self-motivated and uh, I always look for the, the challenges in the job and I find them myself. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to respect. And as long as you continue to respect me as an employee and I respect you as an employer, then the relationship is good um, and uh, the owner shouldn't be on you. How did you find out about this vacancy? The key element here is that you have been proactive 
in finding this vacancy and that you've highlighted it as something that you really want to do? Well, I'm particularly interested in the marketplace that you're in and uh, I've known about your organisation for some time. Uh, I called the HR department and they told me that you were currently recruiting for this post, so that's on here. How does this job compare to others? This question is designed to find out whether you've got any other applications on the go and how this rates against those other applications. So this is an opportunity for you to express what it is exactly that you love about this job. There are some quite exciting um, jobs coming my way at the moment, but I didn't want to accept or look too far into those because I'm, you know, from what I know of your role so far and your company, I was really keen to meet you today and find out even more. I have actually got a couple of others that are looking really good, but I've been very keen to meet you this morning, so that's why I'm here. What is a major goal for you? This is a great time to give an example of how motivated you are outside of work. Well, later on the year, I'm going on a, a trek for charity. I'm, I'm trekking to Nepal, so uh, it's a pretty major goal. It's a lot of preparation, but um, I'm, I'm doing it over the Christmas New Year period. I'm really looking forward to it, getting fit for that. What do you know about our company? This question is cited as one of the most common reasons why somebody is not offered the job. So make sure you do your research before you go to interview. Uh, well, I know you were established in 1986. I know you employ over 2,500 uh, UK employees. I know that last year you turned over well in excess of 3.5 billion and you're looking to expand into the American markets. What do you think of our offices? Even if you think their offices are the most shabby in the world, focus on something that you've taken that you really like. It may be just the friendliness of the staff, it may be that it was a quick commute in. Whatever it is, focus on that. Don't talk about the negatives. Well, it seems like a really nice place to work. Everyone seems really friendly. In fact, the receptionist when I came in, you know, gave me a cup of tea, told me where the toilets were. She was really nice. How long have you been looking? The key to this is taking the focus away from how long you've been looking for a job and putting it onto how careful you are being about choosing the right role. Well, I haven't actively been looking that long. Um, I mean, it's very important to make the right decision, so I'm taking my time with it. What attracted you to this position? What makes the company exciting? What makes the position exciting? And why you feel you'll be challenged? It's a job I think I can do really well. Uh, it gives me challenges that my last job didn't, which would be really important to me. And um, I'm very attracted to, to some of the things that this firm's done in the past. How did you find out about this vacancy? The best thing you can do here is show that you highlighted this company as somebody that you really wanted to work for. I came across your, your advert in the Times and I was very excited because I've always wanted to work for a company quite like yours. So when I saw the ad, I jumped at the chance. What are your long-term goals? This is the perfect time to be honest about your long-term objectives and to ascertain from the company as to whether this role will help you achieve them. Uh, long-term, well, I'd like to be financially secure um, and I'd really like to go into management. I, I'm putting myself through a management course at the moment, so I'd really like to look into that. And I guess long-term, I'd, I'd like to have a family. How's your job search going? Here's a chance to remind them that you may be snapped up quite quickly, so they better get their skates on. But at the same time, what you want to do is say how keen you are on this role compared to the others that you are seeing. My job search is going really well at the moment. Um, I have been very selective in my applications, um, and I have actually had an offer put forward to me but I'm very excited about this position so I'm waiting to see what happens with this job before I accept the other job that's been offered me. Why do you want to work here? If you're keen on this role make sure that during the interview you've highlighted three or four things as to why you want to join the company because this question is bound to arise. You're a great company, you've got a fantastic name, uh, you've got a great product, you, you obviously have great people working for you. I want to be one of them. Why is this job better than any others? Well, at the end of the day, we all need to be challenged. So focus on the fact that this is the best next stage for you in your career.
I'm just at the stage now in my career where I need progression and this job offers me progression. It offers me opportunities to stretch my boundaries and, and that's really what I'm looking for. So no disrespect to my current job, but I really need to move forward and I think your company's going to allow me to do that. What is your impression of our company? The company wants to know why you want to join them and this is the time to tell them. Aside and apart from the job vacancy, which I think sounds absolutely amazing, I've been very impressed by you and your colleagues and I love the offices here and I think that this would be a really great environment to work in. Do you have any current goals? This is not necessarily a work question but it's more about do you continually focus on self-improvement? My current goal is to complete my first half marathon. I'm in training at the moment with a group of friends. We go three times a week and I'm hoping to complete the marathon uh, in November. Which company would you like to work for? This is an attempt to trip you up and to find out whether there are other companies that you would prefer to work for other than this company. So here's an opportunity to remind them as to A, why you want the job, and B, why you want to work for them. Tell you why I'm really intrigued by your organisation. I've been following it over the last few years. I can see the growth. I can see the direction it's going. I'm really enthused by the sector in which you work and I, I like what I hear back about the, the teams that are involved and I think that this role in particular is something that I'd really love to get my teeth into and the fact it's with your company is, is a great bonus. Have you tried to leave before? It's important to make clear that you're not being disloyal to your current company but that it is actually just time to move on. Um, I have been thinking about it for a while, um, but now I know it's the right decision for me. What makes us different from our competitors? This is a research question. Make sure that before you go to the interview, you've highlighted the major differences between this company and their competitors. Well, I really like the fact that you don't sell on price. It's all about the quality of the product and great service. What's the worst thing you've heard about our company? If you have heard bad things about the company, ensure that the negativity is far outweighed by the positive things you've heard about the company as well. There's always two sides to every story. To be honest, every company has its detractors, uh, but I have only heard good things about this company and, and that's why I'm here. Do you have any reservations about working here? If you do have any reservations about working for the company, then this is a great time to get them aired. But always make sure that you finish with a positive. Um, I wouldn't say I have any major reservations. Um, you've cleared up an awful lot of the questions and queries I had during the meeting. There are a couple other questions which I can ask you. Otherwise, no, I'm very happy um, with what you've told me so far. How long would you stay with us? No company wants somebody to join only for them to leave after three months. So here's the time now to explain that you're in it for the long run. Uh, well, all the, all the companies I've worked with in the past, I've built relationships with, so I'm, I'm always in for something for the long term, keep developing together. I'd be really disappointed if I wasn't here for at least three or five years, but I'm in it for the long term. Would you accept a counter-offer? If the interviewer thinks that you'll accept more money to stay in your existing position, then you won't get the job. Well, my company has already offered me a counter-offer, which I've declined because I feel I've gone as far as I can with them and I'm looking for career growth and I feel I can get that here. What would you do if you weren't offered the job? Well here they want to see how enthusiastic you are about the role. But likewise, it's a great opportunity to express that if for any reason this role is not offered to you, that you'd be interested in maybe another role that may come up. I, I would be very, very disappointed, obviously. I'm very excited about this job. and I'm very keen to work with you, and, and, I, and I think I'm the right man for the job. In fact, I know I'm the right man for the job. Um, but, you know, I would have to, obviously, pick myself up and move on. Uh, and hopefully there'll be other oppor opportunities come up within your organisation. What salary are you looking for? Two issues here. Number one, you don't want to tell them your salary in case it's either too low or too high for what they're talking about. And number two is you want to express that money is a, um, a secondary concern for you, that the job is the most important thing, but at the same time you still need to live. 
Well, I have a couple of other offers at the moment. Um, the job is the most important thing, first of all. But I obviously I have to pay the bills. Uh, I'm looking at uh, stepping up in my lifestyle. So I'd be I'd be open to discuss what you have on offer. Will your partner be happy if you're offered the job? This is a great opportunity to show that if you are in a relationship, that it is stable and supportive. Well, my partner's always really supportive of anything I want to do, and this is something I really want to do. Would you consider any other role in the company? Here, you want to show that while you're focused on this role, you are open to discussing other opportunities. Well, I, I've applied for this role, and that's um, where I think my skills would lie, but I'm very interested in the firm, so... I'd love to talk about what you have in mind. What other opportunities do you have on the go? The best thing you can do here is not divulge who else that you have interviews with, but to focus more on how this compares against those other opportunities. The opportunities are looking really good at the moment. I have had a couple of offers from uh, different companies, but I'm really excited about this position. So I'm really hoping that this one comes off. Would you be suited to a bigger organisation? best thing you can do here is focus on the type of role and the type of company and the people involved rather than the size of the company. The size of the company isn't as important to me as the scope of the role and the people that I would be working with and I think that your company ticks all the right boxes for me. Have you ever made an unpopular decision? All managers have to deal with difficult decisions on occasions. What the interviewer wants to know is A, whether you've got the aptitude to make the difficult decision, but B, give an example where it's benefited the team. There was a time when I had to make an unpopular decision uh, recently. Uh, my team weren't making the, meeting their targets, so I had to increase their hours at a time when they're normally partying. Not very popular, you can imagine, uh, but everyone got their bonus, so I ended up being popular. <laughs> Have you ever coached anybody? This is a great opportunity to uh, give an example where you've coached somebody, but also to demonstrate the impact it's had not only on the individual, but also on the company and yourself. Well, I have had some experience of it, and uh, I find it really rewarding because you do get to see people come on. Um, there was a guy on my team who wasn't hitting his sales targets, and you know we had a chat about it, and now he's overachieving. And it's, it's great. How do you discipline staff? Well, in the first instance, I like to have a face-to-face -face or a telephone call, at the very least. But then afterwards, I always make sure uh, whatever we've discussed is in writing. Email or letter, just find it eliminates any confusion. Who's been the best boss you've ever had? Uh, this question is to establish what qualities you feel are important in a really good boss. I think if, if there was one person in particular, um, she was, uh, we had a really good relationship. She really trusted me to get on with the work. She sent me some really difficult targets, but I, I really wanted to get them. And uh, I found her really inspiring throughout the whole time I worked with her. She's great. Do you prefer to delegate? This question is trying to establish the balance between delegating and taking responsibility for working yourself. I think it's a balance between the two, quite honestly. If you've got good quality staff around you, you can delegate. Terrific. That's obviously the course of action. But sometimes you just have to roll your sleeves up and uh, get on with the job yourself. How do you understand people? This question is aimed at how much importance you place on understanding what motivates your staff. Well, I try to get to know them socially, find out what motivates them, what their goals are, and then part of my job is to do what I can to help them achieve those goals. Describe your management style. The company are trying to see here whether you manage by the stick or by the carrot. Probably the best answer is to show that you use both. Um, I believe I have the skills to enthuse people. I believe I have, um, I know I have the skills to inspire people. I'm a very fair person at the end of the day, but I can be extremely firm at the same time. Um, it's not necessarily important that people see me as a friend or I'm a friend to someone. It's more important to me that, um, that I, they, I lead by example and I'm someone who they can look up to. Have you sacked anybody? 
I think what the company wants to hear here is that while you're prepared to sack somebody and that you'll do it for the greater benefit of the company, it's not something that you either enjoy or take lightly. Well, I have had to do it. Uh, it's not something I enjoy. But I've, I think I've learned in business that it's not who you hire, but who you don't fire that makes the difference between success and failure. How do you motivate staff? What the company is trying to establish here is whether you understand that praise is far more powerful than incentives. Well, I talk to them about the bigger picture, firstly. Uh, make sure that there are plenty of incentives. Uh, but most of all, I give praise when praise is due. How do you deal with difficult staff? What the interviewer is trying to establish here is whether you ascertain all of the facts and establish what the perspective of the difficult person is before jumping to any conclusions. I think first of all I'd, I'd want to find out what's going on, what the effects of these problems are, who the staff are involved, find out more and, and in fact including that sit down with them, that person, and find out what their side of the events are and see whether it's something we can iron out rather than actually having to make any drastic decisions or major changes. So I'd research it first. How do you know if you're doing a good job? The two key things here are how good are the results you're getting but secondly, what kind of quality feedback are you getting from your staff? Well, I think the only way I can know I'm doing a good job is if we're getting the results that we deserve and we expect. But to make sure every three months we have a 360 review, I want to make sure that my team are on message. But I also want to find out how they think I'm doing and I get feedback from them. Give an example of when you pulled the team together. What the company are trying to establish here is whether you've turned the difficult situation around and how that has improved the staff morale. In my last job, um, several redundancies were made. In fact, it affected about 20% of the company. Um, thankfully, I wasn't one of them, but as a result, staff morale was pretty low. So I organized um, a few bonding sessions with uh, the company and it, it turned out to be a good thing because with a smaller number, we are now more efficient. What do you look for when recruiting? The best thing to do here is to highlight probably three or four key attributes that will benefit a team. Um, someone who's enthusiastic, someone who can get results, someone who I think will work well with the team I already have, and someone who I think will fit the job and enjoy the job. You're a bit old, aren't you? The key here is to focus on your experience and enthusiasm as opposed to your age. I know I have a lot more energy now than I did 20 years ago, that's for sure. And I think this country's got it wrong, because this country tends to retire everybody when they get to a huge level of experience, and they're in prime pickings for any organisation such as yours. Are you happy to work in an all-white workforce? This is a classic example of the company potentially trying to rile you. And the best thing to do is turn the question on its head. Well, I'd be interested to know why you have an all-white workforce, but at the end of the day, I'm just interested in talent, not colour. Will you have to hire a babysitter? This is not necessarily an illegal question, but it's sort of questioning whether you have um, proper arrangements set at home. And again, it's aimed at sort of riling you to see how you react to that question. The best thing to do is to stay calm keep focused and say that it isn't a problem. Um, we may do, but um, if, if it's a yes or a no, uh, it won't affect my work. We're very well set up and prepared for that. Well done. Congratulations. You've made it to the end. Um, we would love to hear your success stories, so please don't hesitate to email us and let us know how you get on. But also, just to remind you, we do do personal coaching, whether it be a telephone coaching session or a one-to-one -one coaching session. So if you're interested to find out more, please don't hesitate to give us a call on the number below. So best of luck, take care, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.